The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, expressed very clearly to Muslims, both fe male and female, just how important education is to the um, growing of, a, of, of, of his followers and his, of mankind. He said things like, if anyone travels on a road in search of knowledge, Allah will cause him to travel on one of the roads of paradise. He said many things. He said, he who issues forth in search of knowledge is busy in the cause of Allah till he returns from his quest. Or seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. He who leaveth home in search of knowledge walk in the path of God. Four things support the world. The learning of the wise, the justice of the great, the prayers of the good and the valor of the brave. So armed with this knowledge that was passed down to me either by my parents or from teachers of before, I wanted to find out more about the educational system here in Libya. As we know, children and the youth, uh, the new generation in Libya here, and I wanted to find out what was being done. I knew from past experiences, from myself going to school here in my early years in primary school, I knew that the, the education system was actively being targeted by the old regime. But now there's a new regime. And over these past six years, I wanted to know was anything being done for the educational system, for the new generation. So I went on a journey, and the first journey, was, part of that journey was the um, Ministry of Education. I'm here today in, uh, with the person in charge of the private school system uh, for the Idar uh, and for the uh, Ministry of Education. I'm talking to uh, the person in charge, and his name is uh, Mr. Ahmed Layan. Ahmed Layan, welcome. Adam Salamik, welcome back So, I just want to ask you about the system here and how you are progressing with work. I've been the director of the foreign education department in private schools across Libya for about a year and a half. I've started this department with a team of four people, including myself. We provide education services for international schools around the country. We've established this new department from the scratch. We've obtained schools accreditations and we managed to do all the administrative papers. And we created a new administrative code for the department so that our schools can live up to their international namesake. Then we started to fact check the international schools accreditations to see if any fraud was going on. We cancelled all the international schools that failed to prove they had valid international schools accreditations. We cancelled all the sources of accreditations provided to us by schools to check for their validity. Of course, we don't have any financial support. Even the internet network we're using has been provided by a personal gesture from one of the employees. We've appointed Ms. Malak to be responsible for running the fact check on the international schools. After she contacted the sources of the accreditations, it turned out that 90 to 99% of the international schools in Libya are fraud. As a result, we have cancelled the accreditations of those used to be international schools and asked them for new international accreditations that are approved by the Ministry of Education. Good morning, class. How are you today? Wow, such a lovely class, such a lovely class. If I shake your hand, that means I'm going to have to shake everybody's hand. <laughs> hello, hello, everybody. Hello. I'll tell you what, I'll do a big hello like that, okay? Okay, and I'll shake your hand. Nice to meet you, Asma. Okay, and how are you getting on in class today? Good. And what is your work? What are you doing? We're, we're doing our English books. English books, I mashallah. I Masha. you're, you're all finished. Mashallah, you're all doing so good. So good, John. Lovely. Nice to meet you, John. Nice to meet you. And, and can I sit down beside some, one of you? Oh. Oh. Okay, I think I see an empty chair there, so I'll sit at this empty chair. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I said, you don't. Okay. 
The naughty chair. No, I, I wasn't. I wasn't naughty yet. Wait until I'm naughty first. Then I sit on the naughty chair. So, <laughs> we're speaking this morning talking about um, the problems that might be arising with private schools, um, how they are dealing with those problems, and uh, the, uh, the Ministry of Education and how they are dealing with private schools and, and w what is happening on the ground here in Tripoli at the moment. Um, Mr. Khaled, can you tell us more about uh, the school, how long it's open and uh, how are you getting on? Uh, the school has opened just recently this year. Uh, we started in the 18th of uh, September uh, 2016 and uh, basically we are a primary school but we have a nursery and a reception uh, classes uh, within the school. Our aim is to, to start uh, with young learners at early education uh, from year one up to year six. Uh, the school teaches the bridge curriculum and uh, to be accredited or to be uh, endorsed by the Ministry of Education here in Libya, we teach Arabic and the Islamic uh, subject. Uh, I mean, talking about, well, not the problems, but at least the, the role of the Ministry of Education here in Libya, I, I think they are starting to understand their role and, and, and they know they should, they, should, they should somehow have some sort of, of a frame for uh, private uh, schools that are mainly teaching international curriculum. I mean, uh, some schools here, or the, the tradition here used to be, is you open your own school and you're accredited or somehow supported by, by the international partner that you work with. But I think there's, there's a major role for the Ministry of Education to step in and have some sort of standards to establish schools. I mean, they're still at an early stage, they are learning, and they are coming and speaking, especially this year. I mean, I've noticed, even though I, it's my first year, but I've noticed from the schools who've been running for a couple of years, they said they've seen some sort of progress this year. I don't know if it's down to, to individuals who's leading the, the, uh, the uh, private sector uh, international department, or is it uh, a strategy by the Ministry of Education in general? Um, Iman, also yeah, I'm, I'm speaking to you here today, and um, thank you for having me. Um, how is how is it? With, with, how do you find the teaching progress here with with the, with the children, with the with the parents, and how do you get, do you get on with the parents and the, the curriculum? Um, teaching here is going smoothly. I mean, the kids are accepting it. It's a completely different change for the parents, but basically because they're finding it hard. It's a new system for them, doing it the UK way and, and UK curriculum, teaching it in a completely different way where they're used to in the Libyan system, whereas they teach the alphabets A, B, C, whereas we don't focus on that. It's mainly the sounds and all that and how to work it out. Um, parents are a bit difficult dealing with them because um, they want their own way of dealing with things and the... Uh, at the same time, they want us to do it for them. So it's like we have to change or adapt to their rules rather than doing it the other way around. So it's a learning progress it's for learning both program. for both yourselves exactly. and the kids. And it's a very hard way of you know just sticking and you know not compromising and not changing your rules to accommodate them. And they just need to learn that these are the rules accept it this way or look for somewhere else where you can put you could will with your own rules so um, do you mind me asking you how you feel about um for the private sector and what what are your thoughts because uh, um later on i will be visiting uh, some public schools how are your thoughts about the public uh, school education sector uh, looking at it from a private uh, point of view i mean it's 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 a chain i mean if you want to call it i mean there's this so many issues with the public sector, and you don't know which point to start with. I mean, you don't know who to blame, whether the situation generally in the country, whether where these teachers, or even the head teachers, or even the principals of those schools where they come from, what kind of education they've got, and uh, what experience is required for a po for running schools. I think it's 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 a role that the Ministry of Education should step in, and I mean I've said it. I I go to regular meetings with the Ministry of Education, and I said we're not brilliant, but we are somehow. Can, we we can we somehow can provide some 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 service and some some and some some advice to these schools. I mean, we've been running in the business. We I mean, I'm talking about our management team here. We all have, uh, I mean, 
a certain level of, of, of experience that we think we can provide. And uh, how? What was the reply to this kind of offer? Well, that's the thing. The, the thing with the ministry, and, and this is generally in Libya, internal communication is, is an issue. So, I mean, you, you could find someone, the head of the international education in Libya, would listen to you, but him getting or her getting the message delivered to a higher level, that's where, where the communication gets lost. And I think this, this is like across the board for the whole management system in the, in the country. Okay, so I'm here this morning speaking to uh, Mr. Mukhtar Mahmoudi, who is uh, uh, a member or chairman of the Al Rawad um, Educational and Awareness um, Charity Organization. I've heard a lot about this organization on my journeys dur during this uh, process of finding out more about the educational system here in Tripoli and um, about the work that this charity organization has come. So I had to come and speak to yourself, Mr. Mukhtar. Thank you very much for coming with me today. Almost done. Um, so I suppose my, my main question is uh, how this uh, organization was set up and what the goals are of this organization. <coughs> uh, for to, to, to begin with, uh, thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity to introduce myself and our, my corporation organization. First, we started our, our uh, job or this organization has started in 2015. We aimed uh, the education side of our country because of its importance for, uh, to establish new generations. So we focused on this uh, side of uh, our country. Uh, at the beginning, uh, this was established in uh, February 2015. Our main goals at that year was to establish the, the organization. And uh, our real job, our real goals started in 2016. We targeted the education side by, for, for three projects. First one is the, what we called Madrasat uh, Khair, the standard school, uh, which in, in, in a simple uh, Simply, it's we extracted the most standard or the best uh, or the standard uh, school worldwide. Then we customize it okay. through a workshop uh, in conjunction with the education of uh, Tajura. Uh, by the way, we started our we, we decided to focus on Tajura. Okay. Simply because we are. I hear there's a lot of schools here in Tajura. I think. Yeah, seven, it's about 73, 73, schools, 73 yeah. schools. Yes. So that's a big enough. Yeah, it's big enough. Yeah. Have to deal with. No, it's, it's mainly to, to focus on certain areas, so you can, you can uh, touch and you can feel what you have established, mm -hmm. whether you are going okay or not. You know, you can measure your KPIs, mm -hmm. key performance indicators. So we started in Tajura, so uh, as I told you, know, mainly we started with three projects with the education side of Tajura. We contacted our uh, colleagues in education of Tajura, and we found them uh, very, very welcoming, very nice people. So I had to start with Mr. Samir uh, Belesher. He was the head of the education uh, in Tajura. Uh, he was very welcoming to us. We started our process with them through, as I told you, three, three, three projects. First one is the standard school. We call it Madrasatuna okay. Khair. Our best, our school is the best. Okay. Uh, as I told you, it's... As a uh, competition to make... True. To, for each one to compete and be the best example of a school. We aim it from this to, to show up what's the standard school should consist of, you know. So as I told you, we extracted the best standards for uh, worldwide. We customized this to the, into the Libyan uh, situation by conducting a workshop with the education of Tajura, uh, expertise, expertise from the Tajura and from our side, we joined in the workshop. We uh, exposed those uh, standards and try to customize them into the Libyan uh, culture. Uh, give each uh, standard its own value, weight, you know. Then, through uh, Tajura education, we spread this all over the schools of Tajura and uh, to aware them that and audits will be carried out uh, to see 
whether your school is meeting those standards or not. What kind of uh, standards are we talking about for the audits? Like, what would you say, like um, uh, cleanliness? Uh, cleanliness. Uh, the most thing is the management. Management. Uh, talking okay. on the management and the uh, teachers of the mm -hmm. school. Cleanliness. Uh, Facilities, mm -hmm. providing facilities, whether these facilities are active or not, you know, yeah. like in uh, computer in, uh, yeah, the labs, are, yeah. and uh, all, all, it's, it consists of about uh, 40 uh, standards. Okay. And uh, as I told you, spread this through all schools of Tajura, about 60, uh, 65 schools, through the education of Tajura, and we started uh, consist, uh, uh, making a team expertise to audit all those schools. Uh, by the end of this process, we bonused the most three uh, schools. Uh, our aim is to make an awareness mm -hmm. to our, all schools. I suppose this would be the first time anything has been done like this in Libya. Uh, I don't to, think I've to ever be, heard of anything like to this. To be honest, yes, it is. We discovered that this is the first time. Because simply when we bonus those three schools, uh, we did uh, this in Marcus Mohan Sinaya. I want to sort of quickly ask you: Would this kind of work would it usually be done by the government, or is it usually, or was it never done before in other countries? Did you use a model like from other countries? Uh, do other countries do they have private uh, or charitable organizations that do this, or is this should be something that the government provides? It's, uh, it can be do uh, be done by both sides, you know, by the government and uh, also the civil society can have to buy touch, uh, touch mm -hmm. this to audit the company. Was it whether the company? Uh, I mean the uh, the, school. Uh, school, uh, the the government school are mm -hmm. doing this. I mean the standard of the what has been enforced by the co uh, the government was whether it's working or not. You have to have a third party mm -hmm. joining, which is civil aviation or uh, civil. Uh, Several uh, corporations like ourselves, you know. So worldwide, it's done by both sides. So tell me, what, what, what are the other two? I'm curious to find out. So you had the ah. model school and a model school. Uh, uh, and this year, for this project, we e evaluated this uh, that job that has been done in uh, 2016 uh, through a workshop. An another workshop updated our. Uh, find out where the weak points try to uh, recover and now we are going to establish this with, again, again with the Tajura education through uh, uh, to be honest we focused on governmental schools okay. uh, private which, schools which are more, not included yet most, yes. uh -huh. it's about 65 schools which okay. is uh, widespread you know uh, the, the second project is the we targeted, targeted uh, Tajura teachers, development of the, the teacher, that is the name of the project, which is uh, managed by me. We targeted 90, 90 teachers throughout uh, Tajura uh, by, via three uh, groups of training. Each group consists of nine uh, training bags. Uh, it's to aware and develop and uh, the teachers of Tajura. Uh, to be, we have established in 2016 about two and, uh, 100, 110% because the, our target was 90 teachers, which actually established about 110. Right. So it's uh, quite This year, we are trying to do this. We, are, we will focus on single school, mm -hmm. just school to to measure whether this goal has been established, we can evaluate our goals. We can evaluate whether they are succeeding or not. You know, so this year, in 2016, we will focus on single school, uh, aware their uh, teachers, and also the management. We will, will focus on management. Okay. All this would, uh, was done with the in conjunction with the, the Tajura schools. Mm -hmm. The third project was. Uh, established by Mr. Engineer Salem Tabib. It's the consists throughout the Jura. Uh, we, we were sponsoring this site. Uh, uh, the aim is to 
find out where are the most intelligent students, where are the, the success in the Jura students, and join them in certain programs to aware them to okay. raise their uh, skills. Okay, right? As in like contests, like would it be uh, and, uh, um, um, mental, uh, would it be extra classes, or what, what, what kind of way would you be helping these, you're talking about higher IQ kind of students? They are, they are consists of uh, the contests or the educational side, who mm -hmm. win the educational consists, who win the uh, poetry, Arabic poetry, okay. or the Arabic writing, mm -hmm. uh, short stories, uh, drawing and all kind of things. So you're looking to find the, the stars, find out the young stars. The stars and mm. to, 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 to join to them in grow. Uh, uh, to grow in certain programs. Okay. Last year we targeted them in a uh, camp, uh, summer camp here in Tajura, nearby mm. here. Mm -hmm. And uh, those were quite successful. Uh, so, 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 so. I must say, it's, uh, since my journey here and what I've seen of the education system, and we were very worried at the beginning of the year that with the delay with the books and the, the delay with the school year, so it was a, a worrying time for everyone. How do you feel about that? And the mentions of maybe strikes that might stop the teaching uh, and stuff like that. How do you feel? Do you think? I think I felt that most importantly we should focus on this new generation because all our hopes is on this generation. Exactly, I agree with you, yes. yes. Focusing on new generations the, the, is the main objective we should focus on because those are the hope for Libya. You know? Now, uh, countries almost, I mean, those, uh, what we see on the Libyan side is it's not, uh, it's not, it's not, we don't like what we are seeing now. But, uh, we still have to work to do a touch. So can you tell me, very important for the viewers like and myself, do you see hope for the future? Do you see, do you see progress? Do you see, do you see things getting better? Your organization growing, uh, being more heavily funded and becoming bigger, is this what you want to see? We are supposed to have our own touch to do the positive things and uh, Results, are, it's not, it's not our, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so we're a small corporation, so it's, mm -hmm. it's not, uh, but I hope is still our uh, goal, and to have this hope uh, come, through, come through, we have to do an effort, mm -hmm. so that's exactly what we're going to do, to put a touch, a positive touch through the education side of uh, our country, and uh, may Allah you know, make this bigger and bigger, inshallah. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Mukhtar, for coming today. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. So after speaking to uh, Mr. Mukhtar Mahmoudi about um, the charity organization that he's involved in and, and what he's offering to the schools, I was invited to come to this school here, which is a primary school called Al Hattab. Um, this school won the actual uh, uh, con contest that they do for schools in 2015. It came first place. So I just wanted to see the the results of, of this charity organization which seemed to be very positive and so I arrived here today to speak to the principal and the the and join the class and have some fun with the class and see what they were doing good morning, good morning thank you thank you for having me today uh, can I study with you today Okay, thank you, thank you very much. You're all so nice. Sit down, everybody. And we have new words. We have new words. I will read and then you can repeat after me, okay? N. 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 Opposite. 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 Next to. Next to. Next to. Next to. Near. 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 Okay. The most. The school. The school. The school. Yeah. Okay. The third one. Malum at Talta. Yes, yes. It is uh, next to the cafe. Next to the cafe. cafe. Yes. yes. What's the meaning of next to the cafe? Who can answer? 
لا ابو عزيم لا ابو عزيم ايه وشن جو المدرسه هنا تحب المدرسه القرايه ايه مليح احسن مدرسه عندي احسن مدرسه <تصفيق> المدارس الثانيه كلهم ايه والله شنو ايه. شنو فيها حاجات مليحه عجبتك انت فيها <تصفيق> انجليزيه تقري باللغه الانجليزيه لا 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 انا عارفه انجليزي انا صف الرابع خامس ناخذه اه خامس تاخذي كلكم تبغوا تتعلموا لغة إنجليزية؟ إيه لا لا ها؟ إيه شنو لا لا؟ لا لا باش تخشي على الكمبيوتر واحد تتعلم تشوفي واحد كذا ها؟ وشنو أخباركم اليوم كويسين؟ كويسين شفتوني اليوم الصبح نتفرج عليكم أنا في طابور صبح ها؟ درتوا روحكم ما شفتونيش لك ولا؟ ها؟ إيه مين تلعبوا حتى كرة سلة؟ لا لا ما تعرفوش تلعبوا لا لا ما تعرفوش تسجلوا لا لا انتوا احسن وحدين احسن وحدين ما شدي انت شدي هيا ما تعرف الدنيا هذه هات الميكروفون ولا تبي 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 all the problems that we're facing at the school are the ones that every governmental sector is facing. If it wasn't for the assistance provided by the parents of the students, this school year would have never started, neither in our school nor in the majority of the rest of the schools. At the beginning of this year, we had no markers, and the schools were in dire need for maintenance. But with the help of the students' parents and the teaching staff, we managed to get by. So what, what do you think is um, some of the causing some of these problems? I, I heard that the separation of classes is causing some overcrowding and stuff like this. Spreading male and female students in classrooms have an impact on the school. We as Muslims are not against it at all. But currently in Tejura, for instance, not a single school was built since the 1980. While on the other hand, the population continues to grow. In houses where there was one family, now you can find four. This school, for instance, was rebuilt in 2002, after the old one was demolished. So there wasn't a new school added in the area, but rather the same one was rebuilt. Therefore, we have no new schools that can take in the growing population, the displaced families, and the transfer students. All of this growing number of students came to find the same classrooms with no modified space or new classrooms. Separation was harmful to male students more than to female ones because the females are still in the same schools and even if they got transferred, they would be placed in relatively big schools. While the male students are crowded by 40 or 45 ones in each classroom and suffer from lack of teachers as Libya's teaching staff and domain are more female-oriented. So there's nothing really to attract the, 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 the somebody from qualifying college to come to teach, is that what you're saying? Because when young men graduate, they usually avoid the teaching domain, as the salaries of the teachers are very low. That's why male teachers look for a job that can provide for them and their families, so they usually choose to work for companies with higher salaries. There is no financial motivation that can push any male graduates to take up 
teaching as a career. Even in private schools, the teachers received nearly the same low salary. Education in Libya was marginalized in the time of the tyrant and still is now. There's been no, uh, uh, no adding to the wage since, since the time of uh, the, the old regime. We thought our salaries would be raised after the revolution, but we're still receiving almost the same amount of money, and even incentives and promotions have been stopped for teachers and principals in Tripoli municipality. But in other municipalities like Musrata, Janzur and other places, teachers are receiving them. So what's making the teachers still come to work? Because teaching is a message and not a craft. When we teach, we deal with students as precious trusteeship left in our hands by their parents. We do all our best to teach them. Last year, teachers bought the markers themselves in order to keep the teaching going. But now, with the shortage of cash at the banks, all teachers have to be sometimes absent for days just to cash out 200 or 300 dinars from their monthly salaries to provide for their families. Do you mind me asking, in your opinion, who, uh, how do you think that these problems could be solved or how can we fix the, the, and, and progress within the education system? Only when the whole country heals, because the education ministry has nothing to give right now. In 2012-2013, we used a 900 square meter yard at the school as a donation spot for the students' parents. It cost us 43,500 dinars. So as you saw, the school's maintenance was all done by the donations of the parents of the students. Until today, there is no support for the schools. I don't know why. Is there some kind of foreign intervention that is preventing the support or what? I don't know. So uh, the, the lack of, basically, the, the lack of safety and security or Adam is probably the main problem. In Definitely, the instability in Libya is the main reason behind the problems. Okay, so thank you very much for having me today. Thank you very much. So in his opinion, the lack of security and stability was one of the main factors. So I began my journey and I wanted to find out what was being done for the future, like apart from these charity op op um, organizations, I wanted to know what else was being done. So after doing my uh, visits towards whether it be the private schools or whether it be the general schools, I wanted also to see what was being done for the future, what was being done for the future generations here in Libya. So I was invited here to the um, uh, Tajura Shabia school where we were invited to a group where they're teaching and training new um, uh, teachers and also people within the uh, social uh, I would say like social welfare or protection of, of the youth. And so we had like different, I was, was invited and I seen different things like, for example, there was a, like a group constitution where they were, uh, they had fines and stuff like that for people who, who uh, weren't keeping up to the standard of the group. Also, they had like a postal system which each person in the group had their name on, a, on an envelope um, where others could either state the negative or positive uh, points about that person. Um, there were memory tests and speed tests to, to, for people to upgrade those kind of qualities within themselves. Um, but also there was training in the, in the sense of how to deal with like diseases, epileptic fits. Um, for example, if people had any kind of, um, they knew somebody that was involved with drugs, youth or even in adulthood, how to deal with those people and how to... Um, within the right parameters and how to, to make sure that they were dealt with correctly and not to distance them from society and let them deal with and cope with those mechanisms uh, on their own. So um, it was an interesting day again here today and um, I'll be hoping to come back where there's a, they're having like a ceremonial uh, proceeding and uh, we'll see what happens with that. So as I expected on my journeys, there's been many facets to the educational system. Whether it be the people in the public sector who put in the tireless amount of hours and, and effort, even though they're not being paid. 
or the people in the private sector who are willing to put in that extra amount of effort and pass on the expertise that they have. And let's not forget the volunteers, countless volunteers and trainers who are working tirelessly to, uh, to upgrade the system and to advance those teachers in their journeys and, and to progress in them within themselves. From my personal point of view, stability is the foundation. And with that stability, then the, all the education system can grow from that. And money and the budget for the education system must be put in. At the end of it all, don't forget that children are our future. And the education system is that found, foundation block for the children to grow within themselves. This has been Hussam Najjar for the Libya Observer in Tripoli.